Shifting Roots. If you're new to this channel, I am gardening in Saskatchewan in zone three, and we are doing an early garden today. Now, gardening in Saskatchewan in April, what? Yes, you can actually do it. Now, of course, there's a few rules. I'm gonna walk you through some of those in this video, show you what I do, and it really varies from year to year. You know, some years are gonna be warmer and you can get out sooner. This year was not quite as warm. I'm out a little bit later than maybe other years, but if you have raised beds, you can do early planting. Now, for those of you who only have in-ground planting, later in the season, I'll show you what we're gonna do with that, but my in-ground is definitely not ready yet. The snow isn't even entirely melted off of the garden, so we're not there yet. I'm a little bit crazy in the fact that I actually start hardening off some of my cold tolerant annuals as early as mid-March. Now, it definitely depends on what the temperature is in a particular year. So this year, I could not do it in mid-March. Last year, I could. This year, it was more like the beginning of April before there were positive temperatures during the day. And so how that works is whenever there starts to be positive temperatures during the day, I will put my plants out and it's often just for a few hours and then I'll take them back in at night. If the overnight temperature is not that low, then I will just cover them and leave them out and it is fine. One nice thing about hardening off early is that, you know, if you can do it in mid-March, I feel like the sun doesn't burn your plants as easy. Now that was not the case this year with me doing it in early April. My plants totally got burnt. I'm kind of embarrassed, but I know from experience that like if they're not too burnt, they will pop back and it, it will be okay. So don't worry about it. to make our early spring garden. Now, of course, before we plant anything, we're gonna to wanna to put some amendments in. So I'm doing worm casings. And then thankfully, the PB Mart had sheet manure for sale. Very excited about this. You know you're a gardener when you're excited that they have sheet manure earlier than everywhere else. And because our soil sometimes has trouble absorbing water, then we're gonna use this biochar as well. So I've also left on a bunch of leaves from the winter. We're just gonna leave these exactly where they are, put on our amendments, and then we're ready to plant. So what you do to prep your beds might differ a little bit from what I'm doing to prep my beds, but in the fall, I added a whole bunch of leaves onto my beds. And then on top of that, now that the snow is melted, I'm gonna put a layer of manure. I have some worm casings, and then I also put in biochar. You do not need the biochar. I'm just using the biochar because our soil here tends to not hold moisture sometimes if it gets too dry. So for me, the biochar is important. So all the beds are prepped now. You'll notice that we have some hoops here. So we've done the two wire hoops so they can go on either side of this 
trellis and then of course we have the plastic ones over here and even if we don't need to use these every single day to put our frost fabric or our plastic on top of at least they're there and they're ready to go you've probably heard the term workable ground thrown around a bit and if you're wondering what that is well here it is workable ground is when the snow has melted and it's not muddy anymore and maybe it's not completely unthawed all the way down but there's a top layer that you can definitely work up and that's the time when you can plant things like poppies and larkspur and some of those other flowers that i've mentioned before and they will be totally fine So these sweet peas are looking pretty rough. Um, when the harding office process happened, I definitely let them get a little sunburned, but I know that they're gonna bounce back. It's gonna be okay. And I've already resigned myself this year with a newborn, a toddler and a preschooler, and of course my 11 year old, that this is not gonna be a perfect garden. Lots of things are gonna die, mistakes are gonna happen. So it is what it is. So it's kind of tempting to think that like, because you're planting early, there will be no weeds. And unfortunately, that is not the case. One nice thing is the weeds take maybe a little longer to come, but they're gonna come, they will be there. Hopefully some of your plants have established a little faster than the weeds have, so it's just a bit easier. One nice thing about raised beds is, I don't know why, but it just feels like it's so much easier to weed a raised bed than it is to weed my in-ground garden. And some of that is just because I've put in soil and there are less weeds to begin with. Having it higher up is just a lot easier on the back too. So one of the things you need to remember if you do an early garden is that you still have to water. I don't know what it is and I am so guilty of this, but when I've been experimenting with my early garden, it's like, I just forget that plants still need to be watered early in the spring. I guess I feel like they'll just, I don't know, magically be okay because it's not like plus 30 in summer temperatures. But no, as soon as you set your seeds out, you need to be watering them every day. And on a little side note, for those of you who have tulips on the prairies, you need to water your tulips. As soon as that snow is gone, especially if you have sandy soil like I do, you must water your tulips. You're gonna get really short stems if you don't. So. I know it is like such a pain in the rear right now because you can't turn your hoses on, you can't use your hoses because it's still freezing at night, you're gonna bust your lines. So that means you have to like go to your kitchen sink, fill up your stuff, water your plants, go back to your kitchen sink, fill up your watering can. And yes, it's super annoying, but unfortunately that's what we have to do if we want an early garden. Oh, nice job. So strong. Good job, Olair. I actually got this cart from Vivor and they are a company that makes gardening equipment for a little bit less. And they gave me this product in exchange for a review and a placement. So the cart was reasonably easy to put together. I don't know, sometimes I just can't follow instructions, but you don't like need any power tools or anything. It's just put together with pins. Now, is it like the sturdiest cart ever? Maybe not just because it is put together with pins, but what I do appreciate about it is it's definitely a good budget option for those of you who maybe can't invest in like $300, $500 for something super sturdy, but it gets the job done. It's very easy to push around. I had no issues. My four-year-old was pushing it around. So if my four-year-old can push this cart around, I think you'll be okay. The other thing I like about it is it has like a rubber mat in the bottom. So that makes cleanup really easy. And if you're putting things in it that you don't want to get through the mesh, then there's a good way for, you know, the things not to fall out. If you're interested in getting your own cart or any of the other products that they sell, I have put their link in the description as well. So our raised beds are thawed about halfway through. I know this because I stuck some rebar in it and that's about how far I could get. But the most important question is actually what is your soil temperature? So we have this really handy soil temperature thermometer and you just stick it in there and leave it in for about a minute and then it will tell you your soil temperature. Bobby! Yes. We are waiting. Yeah, you're waiting for the soil test. 
Now, when I first thought I would plant everything out, I stuck that in there and I realized it was only just like vaguely above freezing. So it still wasn't time yet. Um, now the soil temperatures are around that 50 mark and I'm certain that throughout the next couple of days, those raised beds will get even higher. So as I'm out here seeding everything, I bet you're wondering what on earth are you seeding? For direct seed, I'm doing basically like any cruciferous vegetable. Those kind, they love the cold. So that means like broccoli, cauliflower, turnips, radishes, kale. As for non-cruciferous vegetables, I'm also seeding lettuce and Swiss chard and carrots and beets. Yes, I think I've remembered everything. Um, you can also see uh, when I put the footage of my little plants that are in my garden planner, kind of what I've put in there. As for flowers, I'm going to be seeding out my stock very soon. I just haven't hardened those starts off yet. I also have sweet peas going in the ground, snapdragons, and some fennel, as well as a little bit of ranunculus. Um, I'm saving most of my ranunculus and my anemones for in-ground planting, but I thought I would just put a few in the raised beds as sort of a trial and to add a little bit of color because that's always fun. As for direct seeded flowers, I've done some nigella, some sapinara, also some poppies. I could have done calendula, but I didn't. And forget-me-nots. Hi, mommy has some. Can I have some yeah, you definitely can. And then you put them right over here, all right? Okay, here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. But how I can do it? Here, you just sprinkle them. Sprinkle them? Yeah, you just sprinkle them. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay, and then we're going to... Oh, no, the seeds. That's okay. Did the chicky eat them? No, the chicky won't eat them, okay? As for covering, I'm going to actually cover everything, even if the temperature is fine. And there's a couple of reasons for this. For one, I have chickens and my chickens definitely can jump up into my raised beds and they can get everything. So until my plants are more established, they just have to be covered. There's also deer in the area. The deer are pretty hungry. So I just want to guard against that too. Um, birds as well. So I just, yeah covering everything. The other reason is I'm going to have two beds that have mostly cruciferous vegetables in them and we have a huge flea beetle problem. Of course, I'm in Saskatchewan, so there's lots of canola being grown and it doesn't matter like say if you're in the city, there's tons of flea beetles. It's just if you live in Saskatchewan, you need to cover them. So I find that that frost cloth works really nicely. And the other thing the frost cloth does besides keep stuff warm at night is it also kind of helps keep those cruciferous vegetables a little cool when the sun is too hot. So it's nice that they can simultaneously provide warmth and shade. If you were deciding to only cover at certain temperatures, I would just cover when it's freezing. Now, some of these plants can handle more than freezing temperatures, but newly germinated plants probably, you know, they're just... Newly germinated plants are a little more tender, so I think it's wise if there's any freezing temperatures in the forecast, just cover it and it'll be fine. If those plants are a little bit more established, you know they're cold tolerant, probably about minus two, you're okay. Anything after minus two, I start to get a little bit nervous about, so I cover it. So as for fabric, I've chosen to use frost fabric. I would not recommend using bug fabric. You're probably not gonna have as much heat protection. So I actually rarely ever use bug fabric. I just use the frost stuff because I like those cooling benefits as well. You could use plastic. Now, the one thing about plastic is during the day, I find plastic is less forgiving because it has a greenhouse effect much like this. So um, if you're not up on your watering, you could fry your plants. So if you have more time on your hands and you're like home more of the day, then go ahead and do plastic. You'll probably get some great results with it. But you know, if you're working full time, if you have little kids and you can't always guarantee that you're going to get out into the garden exactly when you need to get out in the garden, then I just find that the frost fabric is a little more forgiving. Now, I know some of you are worried about like, well, what if it's freezing often? And as you can see in this forecast, it's still freezing off in here too. Most nights it's freezing. So if you have the row covers over top, you pretty much don't have to worry at these kind of temperatures. You will still be fine. Um, if anything gets below that, um, you could maybe go in with some water jugs filled with water just to help keep that heat in. 
Um, or if your stuff is in a greenhouse, instead of being planted out, then you could put in a heater, try the water jugs as well, use the covers. But basically my rule is I don't put out anything that I'm not willing to lose because let's face it, we live in Saskatchewan, things happen, surprise minus temperatures happen, but I feel pretty confident that at this part of April, we're probably past that. <laughs> change of plans. So the weather's taken a complete turn for the worse. Um, basically every day the high is not getting much above zero and the low is somewhere around minus four or minus five overnight for a couple of consecutive days. Now these plants can totally handle you know the odd night of that but day after day after day not so much. We're going in with a new strategy. I've taken all of my anemones and my ranunculus off the deck, even though they're right beside the house in a south facing, really warm spot. I think it's just too many days in a row for them to be okay out there, even with frost cloth. So I'm moving them in here and I've decided that overnight, I'm gonna put on a heater. Now during the day, this is totally fine. The temperature in here right now is about plus six and outside it's around minus one or zero somewhere in there so not worried about this during the day at all then overnight i'll put frost cloth and everything put my heater on and i think we should be just fine sorry for all the rocking but obviously i have a little helper with me and i mean wouldn't you know it this of course is the day where it's travel not recommended on the road so i have the girls home um it's a no nap day for her so for all you moms out there, my child is a great sleeper overnight, but the trade-off is she has one day where she will somewhat nap, and then the next day there are no naps whatsoever. It's like 10 minute contact naps. It's, it's terrible. But anyway, as for the stuff that I planted outside, I'm willing to accept that all of those starts could just be completely lost. But for fun, let's go check and see if the things I did yesterday to prep them worked at all. If you're interested in what I did, I also have a small little video, which I can link into the description, saying what I do in like a panic situation when the weather turns bad. All right, first we're gonna check back on those snapdragons. Oh my goodness, this is so much snow. Okay. They're still about the same. I'm still not convinced we're not losing them. Um, these were sunburnt to begin with, so they're not the greatest starts, but I have stuff to replace them if necessary. And over here are my trays of ranunculus. So yesterday what I did is I put frost fabric on them and I also put a plastic fabric on them. And then I added additional hoops over here just to give them a little bit of a better structure. So let's see. Right, so not looking fantastic, but I mean, I still think there's hope. The snow is melting, they're still green. It's just a matter of wait and see. So I really wanna get this YouTube video up. So I think I'm just gonna kind of like end the content here, but I will keep you updated, especially if you follow me over on Instagram, I will let you know how my plants make out. So thanks so much for joining me on this video. I have tons of free gardening resources for you in the description, as well as you can head over to my shop. There are plenty of eBooks and planners to help you on your gardening journey. I will see you in the next one, friends. Bye-bye. Ta-da! <laughs>